بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Ibn Abbas narrates, I heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, take benefit of five before five. Your youth before your old age, your health before your sickness, your wealth before your poverty, your free time before your preoccupation, and your life before your death. Allah gave us one life, brothers and sisters. There are no do-overs and there are no second chances. It's a short life. The lifespan of the people of this ummah is between 60 to 70 years as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us. Our ambitions are endless, but our time is limited. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrated this reality for us when he drew, a, uh, he drew a square in the sand and he drew a line in the middle of the square and let it extend outside of the square and then drew several lines, several small lines perpendicular to that central line. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, this is man, and this is the end of his lifespan, which encircles him, meaning the, uh, the, the, the square, or by which he is encircled. And this, which goes beyond it, is his hope, meaning the line that goes out beyond the square are his hopes, they're endless. And these small lines, are the afflictions, the tests of life, brothers and sisters. Then he said, if this one misses him, then uh, that one gets him. And if that one misses him, then this one gets him. That is the reality of life. It's filled with afflictions, which are tests that purify the believer. Our hopes extend beyond the lifespan which is written for each of us. Hopes of amassing a fortune, of marrying and seeing our children and grandchildren, of traveling the world, of mastering many sciences. And death ends all hopes. Hopes for more wealth, hopes for more time with our family and hopes for more worship. The dying wish to return to perform but a small good deed which will be weighty on the scales on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت Till when death comes to one of them, he says, My Lord, return me. Perhaps I shall do righteousness in that which I deserted. We exist in this life, dear brothers and sisters, as travelers on a journey, the duration of which is predetermined. And so too are the duties during this trip. Whoever fulfills their purpose has utilized their life and time. And the one who squanders their time has none to blame but themselves and does not harm Allah in the slightest. Therefore, we need to view our time in this life like the time spent in a departure hall in an airport. Some enter the hall only to exit immediately for their flight. And some remain a short time, others a little longer, regardless of how well built and accommodating the hall may be. All will depart, no one remains. All of us will leave this world, my brothers and sisters. All of us will depart. To be clear, there is no blame in wanting to live a long life. But life is not lived for the sake of merely existing. Uh, that in of itself has no intrinsic benefit. Rather, life is to be desired by the believer to increase his good deeds and increase his stock in the hereafter. Uh, a Bedouin man asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, who is the best of the people? And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man tala umruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. He whose life is long and his deeds are good. That's the best person. So with such a short life in general and with competing hopes, how do we utilize this life before death? We can only answer that question if we know what our purpose is in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed us with two duties in life. Two. The first is to worship Allah. He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn and mankind but to worship me. That's the purpose of our creation. Allah created us for no reason other than to know Him, to surrender to Him, to obey Him and to worship Him. Obligatory worship, fasting of Ramadan, uh, the five daily prayers, zakah, hajj, yes, these are time-bound and prescribed for certain periods, but not all. 
Yes, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, qumil layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi, wa rattili al-Qur'ana tartila, inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila, inna nashiat al-layli hiya ashaddu wata'an wa aqwa muqila, inna laka fi al-nahari sabahan tawila. Allah says, O oh one who is wrapped in clothing, arise to pray the night, except for a little, half of it, or subtract from it a little, or add to it and recite the Qur'an with measured recitation. Indeed, we will cast upon you a heavy word, which is the Qur'an. Indeed, the hours of the night are more effective for concurrence of the heart and tongue and more suitable for words. Indeed, for you by day is prolonged occupation. That occupation during the day, brothers and sisters, is the second duty which Allah, uh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed us with, and that is vicegerency on earth. So after worshipping Allah, there is the second duty, which is stewardship of the earth to establish justice, to free mankind from the shackles of slavery, enslavement to their whims and desires, and enslavement to the will of others, to admonish and to guide to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anthir. O you who covers himself, with a garment meaning, arise and warn. This second duty is not bound by any specific time like the first one, which is worship. Allah did not say arise during the day or during the night. Rather, he said, arise, qum fa'anthir, arise and warn. This duty is bound by action. Action in informing people and showing them the manifest path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man's struggle with his existence and inability to find meaning and purpose are but results of a distance between him and his creator. Let us not be of the arrogant who hear the call of Allah and turn away from it. Let us not be of those who would rather distract themselves with play and entertainment and intoxication over pondering their own mortality and what is beyond. This life, my brothers and sisters, and its duties are for one objective overall, and that is earning our place in paradise. Making benefit of our lives before death means to put forward that which will benefit us after death and not to procrastinate until death is upon us then we say, if only I had fasted, if only I had prayed, if only I had been charitable. Such a person's state will be like those whom Allah said and told us of, And Jahannam hellfire is brought out, is brought out upon that day man will remember. And how shall the reminder be for him? He shall say, Oh, would that I had forwarded for my life. I wish I had put forward something, yes, in my life. Uh, or he says, for my life, because the real life is the one in the hereafter. Our existence in this life is our one opportunity for amassing good deeds and elevating and ra rising in rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Utilizing this life before death also manifests in rushing to repentance before the time is up, before the soul reaches the throat, before the angel of death is visible. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jalla yaqbalu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Indeed Allah, the exalted in might, accepts the repentance of the slave so long as the soul does not reach the throat. Utilizing this life is by making use of one's time. To not waste it in frivolities, let alone wasting it in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seize your life before your death. How comprehensive indeed this instruction is. All of us confess that death is the one inevitability in our existence. The one cup everyone will drink from. And the fate met by everyone. But how many a time are these words uttered insincerely, without true reflection and without them emanating from the heart? If we paused to truly think about this reality, then we taste the bitterness of these words on our tongues. Take benefit of five before five, your youth before your old age, your health before your sickness, 
your wealth before your poverty, your free time before your preoccupation, and your life before your death. Let us live by these words. Let us live our lives with these instructions always in mind. Let us never stray from them, or we'll end up finding ourselves in loss. With that, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this series comes to a close. But our program of short reminders continues, inshallah. We're happy to announce that next week, we start the first of our new seven part series on the seven shaded under the throne of Allah. Make sure to tune in, inshallah. And if you have any suggestions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future, then please send us an email here at info at London Muslim Center, all one word, dot org dot UK. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make us of those who hear the speech and follow the best of it. Those are the ones Allah has guided and those are the people of understanding. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.